beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Welcome the mighty presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. Shabbat Shalom. Spirit of the Lord, we thank you. Go ahead and bless Him. Spirit of revelation. Spirit of power. Spirit of wisdom. The Spirit of grace. Go ahead and reflect on his glory. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Spirit of the living God, you are here for us to bless us, to change us, and we acknowledge you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for healings. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that tonight you will really change our lives. You will radically transform us. We are not tired of your presence. We are people who are passionate. We seek you not for things. We seek you as a matter of life and death. We have come to find out that without you there is no life. And so Lord, we seek you with all our lives and everything we have. And we pray that you be glorified tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Be seated. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy.
every time and see the most powerful thing about the word of God is its ability to produce results if the word of God did not have the ability to produce results we will be wasting our time I just want you to imagine for one minute that everything you have believed were a lie that would be a complete waste of time years invested in the pursuit of the spirit only to find out it's a lie but we thank the Lord because that which is written here is true it can change lives you hear the testimonies all the time and tonight we will be changed in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I think a lot and one of the things that I think about is the level of transformation and impact that God has granted unto us as individuals and as a ministry to be able to communicate a dimension of spiritual reality to help build and strengthen the body of Christ and I think it's a great privilege you see the more you know God the more you see how easy it is for him to do without you are we together the more you know God the more you have an encounter with his might the more you see how small and inconsequential you are in the overall equation of his will and then you see how much is a privilege for him sometimes to have to wait on you and wait on your will to cooperate with him before he moves are we together and our lives um, are a reflection of such a testimony that it looks as though it is difficult for God to do without us although he has all the power He seems to always patiently carry us along his program and it's a privilege for us to represent his purposes not only in this city but in many regards around different areas of this nation and around the world it's a pleasure and it's a privilege and we thank him let us never forget these things there's so many people thousands of people following us right now from different parts of the world we are here different people coming from different places um, you know sometimes we get so used to how easy the anointing of the spirit can make things become that we think it is so for everyone and sometimes we get so familiar with the dealings the operation of God's anointing that when we take our time to lavishly give him thanks like this it looks like a waste of time but then the success and everything that you see in our lives and as a ministry is built on laws and one of it is a heart that is passionately committed to saying thank you are we together if if this is all we do today as boring as it may seem as unspiritual as it may seem and as spiritually basic as it may seem for many this is the key that has kept God in touch with many mighty people. They know how to go back and say, Lord, thank you. Your grace, your grace. I'm nothing without you. It's your grace, your grace shines on me. Sing it from your heart. Your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. Your grace, your grace, 
shines on me. Shines on me. Shines on me. But I'm everything with you. Shines on me. Shines on me. It's your grace. Hallelujah. Lord, we sincerely thank you. We sincerely thank you for the privilege of being the ones to partner with you in birthing such magnificent testimonies in the lives and the destinies of people. It is not within the power of any man to change any life. But with God, all things are possible. And Lord, we thank you for being the secret, the mystery, the law, and the reason behind our success and the lifting. Why should I keep what people say? They don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. Truly, they don't know. What you mean to me, they don't know. What you mean to me, but I'm glad I know. What you mean to me, I'm glad I know. What you mean to me. You are the air I breathe. You are the air that I breathe. Your very presence that is living in me. Just let me pour out my heart for a few moments before his presence. You are my daily bread. You are my daily bread. You are my daily bread. Your very word that is for Not a song, it's the truth. And I'm desperate for you. I'm lost without you. Shabaka talabarato sutu. This is part of the meeting. It's an atmosphere for you.
saying thank you to the one who has made us all that we are. We sincerely acknowledge you. You are faithful. Above and beyond our limitations and weaknesses, you are faithful. You have chosen us and you have put your name upon our lives and destinies. You see the wonder, the wonder you have made out of our lives. We are deeply grateful. We are deeply grateful. We are deeply grateful. We are deeply grateful. Deeply grateful. Deeply grateful. Deeply grateful. Sabakota Kashibata. Zikoto Sukoto Kabarati. your place take your
Can you just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit? Just hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Hold hands with someone and begin to pray in the spirit. Just make contact. Oh, like a bride waiting for her groom. Even so, come. Even so, come. Even so, come. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. There is something that will lead heaven to this place. Keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying. Rakata parada balada 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 Hey, na 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 na, Maria, na 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 na, oh, so na na, Maria, na na, 
Hallelujah. We are going to pray one more time. If you are sick in your body, just lay your hands there. There is a strong healing anointing in this place right now. You are sick anywhere in your body. Lay your hands. Lay your hands. I see the power of God about to touch people in a few minutes. Miracles of healing. The Lord is healing migraine headache right now. There are people suffering from intense migraine headache. The power of God is touching you right now. Right now. Right now, right now, I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing a lady having severe, like, like menstrual cramps, severe menstrual cramps. Right now, as I speak, the power of God is touching, 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 touching. That pain leaves right now. That pain leaves right now. There is a spirit that has been walking with a lady. You literally feel as if there is a man walking by your side. That spirit is leaving you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. That spirit is leaving you right now. This is Zion, the city of the Lord. There's someone, your voice, for a while, your voice has been unable to be clear. It's like there's something hooking you. You're going to feel like fire on your throat right now. Right now, and your voice will come back to normal. Right now right now hotness of the body that's what the lord is telling me father we give you all the glory hotness of the body hotness of the body is living right now there is someone you brought your mother your mother is in this place she's been unable to sleep for a long time she can't even sleep but right now the power of god is coming upon her and that devil is giving way right now that devil is giving way right now that devil is giving way right now. That devil is giving way right now. There's someone you have a boil, like a boil in your nose, right inside your nose. The power of God is touching it. Not only will it be healed, it will disappear right away. You will touch it and you will not feel anything. Right now, the Lord is touching. The Lord is touching. The Lord is touching. I'm seeing a river in the realm of the spirit. That's what I'm seeing flowing into this place. A river. It's a river of miracles. Many will be swept by that river. It's a river that flows from the love and the throne of God. It's a river bringing healing. Bringing healing. Bringing healing. There are, there are miracles going on. Healing miracles. Zekate parato shapa karyanda kapros kotosh kepres ketos shapres ketos sepatari ketos abaria. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a spectacular miracle that the Lord wants to do for many people. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a group of people in the realm of the spirit. You used to hear God in profound dimensions, but from the beginning of this year, something happened to your hearing and it's an attack from the gate of hell now please pay attention i'm speaking by the spirit it's an attack from darkness upon your hearing and it's like something has closed you some of you don't even know you are part of it i'm about to pray for you 
because that that prophetic dimension you need it to hear what i want to teach you tonight you need it there are some dimensions of spiritual communication that you cannot understand it scientifically and the lord is asking me to pray therefore father i stretch my hands on your people every gate of the prophetic that has been closed every gate every gate the hearing ear let that grace be released right now the hearing ear the hearing ear Sata many of you will hear the sound of angels instantly instantly inside outside those following on our social media platform the lord is opening the lord is opening prophetic dimensions the sharing of the spirit authentic sharing not nonsense an authentic hearing shakataba sheketekata rakata pakotosia for some of you it is restoration 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 what happened to your hearing that you no longer hear the sounds of the spirit like fire is coming on the ears of people fire fire fire, fire falling on people fire a restoration of hearing a restoration of hearing a restoration of hearing lift your hands there are people here your dreams used to be prophetic but it was hard and my God is saying, something is happening to your spirit man the hand of God is coming upon your spirit man the hand of God coming upon your spirit man right now dreams 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 shaka patata stretch dreams where you will understand the counsel of God in the visions of the night the counsel of God in the visions of the night the counsel of God in the visions of the night hallelujah hallelujah the last thing i'll pray for before we sit down is sensitivity listen let me tell you if you lack sensitivity in this season and in this time you will never be able to be in sync with what god is saying sensitivity is like breathing in the realm of the spirit to be able to understand the impulses of the spirit and align yourself with what the spirit is doing and saying he said the sons of Issachar they had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do I want to pray for you there is a grace that makes men sensitive many of us used to be sensitive especially our sisters something has happened to your sensitivity but in the name of Jesus Christ I pray this is a mountain of the Lord's house where grace is sufficient grace is sufficient right now i stretch my hands may that grace begin to fall on men and women let it fall let it fall sensitivity discernment sensitivity discernment sensitivity discernment to the speakings of the spirit sensitivity discernment to the speakings of the spirit mighty on your throne mighty on your throne you were mighty on your throne hey mighty on your throne you were mighty in this place mighty on your throne you were mighty on your throne mighty on your throne you were mighty in this place Mighty on your throne, you are mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne, mighty in my life. Mighty in my life, you are mighty in my life. Mighty in my life, you are mighty in my life. Mighty in my life, you are mighty in my life. Mighty in my
Father, we pray that you go ahead and do everything you intend for us to experience tonight. Right beyond our dimensions, right beyond our perceptions, right beyond our yieldedness. I know, God, I pray that you activate strange things in the lives of people. Strange things in the lives of people. Please sit down carefully if you can. Tonight will be a night of strange impartations. If you can, just sit down and let your heart be open. Let your spirit be sensitive. No carelessness, no distraction. Please. Koinonia is a place of impartation. You need impartation to rise and step into your prophetic destiny. There are times that certain things need to be activated. Nothing can cover for noise and stories. You must come into the reality of certain experiences and impartation is one of the platforms that can bring you into those realities. Once again, I welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. Tonight is a night of strange impartations. And there is a reason why God is doing it. There is a reason why God is bringing us to this dimension of impartations. It's not just for nothing. Listen, in the course of my teaching, I'll be very brief tonight. But in the course of my teachings, there will be different kinds of anointings just coming in. You get this in Koinonia. Koinonia is a place where things are activated. And so when your word comes, it will come upon you. Yours is just to be sensitive. As I teach, there will be dispensing of graces. Dispensing of graces. Be sensitive. Don't just hear what I'm saying. A time will come. Yours will come upon you. So it's going to be a noisy meeting. Don't worry. You will hear what I'm saying. But as I teach, people will receive things. Will receive things. Inside, outside, everywhere. You will receive things. Shabratu sakuratu sabrita shidahari. Listen. The church must pay the price for a genuine anointing that will really be able to bring God to the scene. The church must pay the price for a genuine, authentic anointing that will be able to bring true results for people. The only way we can become a revelation of the Christ, I'm telling you this, is to contend for a dimension in the spirit that affords us the privilege of hosting superior dimensions of the presence and the power of God. Talk is cheap. It's easy to make a lot of noise in the body of Christ. It's easy to stand upon many doctrinal and theological dissertations communicating the things that we believe should be but in the final analysis people need to experience the reality of the kingdom and i think this is where a lot of we pastors have not done justice for people a lot of us are speaking prophets a lot of us are mighty pastors and apostles and prophets and bishops we can communicate spiritual reality but the challenge is when it comes to the practical demonstration of the essence of our communication we try to create all kinds of theological excuses so there are so many things we teach that god is there are so many things we teach that god can do there are so many realities we we whet the appetite of god's people by opening them up to the possibilities that can be in the spirit but it is so frustrating when people's appetites are to the apex yet we sustain the power and the life to experientially draw them into those experiences so we teach on healing 
we teach on different kinds of healing different dimensions of healing and then in the final analysis the sick person still goes back sick the cancer patient still goes back with, with their cancers we are happy about dispensing theologically arranged communications but the bible says listen the bible tells us that the gospel listen is not just about the excellency of speech right but the demonstration of power to the end that the faith of people will not be founded upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of god no matter what you say about god if you cannot bring him to the scene for me to relate with his might you have wasted my time i may applaud you for your intelligence and your ability to be flawless in your research but let me tell you something in the final analysis people need to be transformed demons are not a theory they are real sicknesses are not a theory they are real oppression is not a theory it is real poverty is not a theory it is real only preaching largely are theories blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God blessed is he who comes in the name of our God hallelujah the Lord showed me a vision a few days ago and in that vision I saw so many people in the church weary and tired that's what i saw in the vision including pastors i saw people seated and stranded no message because everything to be preached have been preached i saw members frustrated and humiliated and the lord began to reveal to me that it is a strategy please pay attention it's a prophetic teaching tonight it's a strategy by the kingdom of darkness because when you study when you listen to my teaching why revivals fail i shared with you dear a strategy with which satan uses to defeat many believers satan will never strike you at your point of strength he knows that all men are human although we are divine there is a human component to us so the moment you are doing the work of the kingdom advancing the purposes of the kingdom fervent in prayer strong in the world the devil will not attack you he knows that there is one thing that is common to all men is called exhaustion the reality of our humanity that no matter how powerful you are no matter how anointed you are a time must come when the reality of your humanity will meet up with you it is at that point that men are separated from the boys it is at that point that only those who sustain a system in the spirit to continue will stand i saw that vision i saw faces i recognized and i could not believe that such great men could be weary now you see a man of god can be weary and you will not know because don't mistaken the grace upon a man to dispense truth and his personal growth and progress there are two different things i can be as dry and weary as whatever but when i stand upon this pulpit the anointing that comes with my office will make me act so flawless you will not know that i'm at the verge of giving up are we together most times we mistaking the grace and the unction that accompanies the office of a man to mean that because that grace looks ever fresh ever flowing in power that it necessarily means the person is highly motivated and happy no there are times i've been so tired physically tired going for meetings and i i can sometimes it looks like i can't stand for 15 minutes but the moment i hold that mic i no longer become joshua selman an apostolic anointing comes and i can stand for hours now you may mistake in my strength to mean that i am not weak do you know sometimes when I get back home, even to eat becomes a problem? Are we together? 
so i saw weariness in that vision i saw many people gassing out in prayer literally like a meter just diminishing i saw people gassing out in their world level and one of the areas that i saw people crying is the area of not getting results financially and otherwise it was frustrating people i saw quarrels between people fathers mothers different people i saw pastors fighting themselves and i was wondering what is the meaning of all this nonsense and the lord told me this is what the devil wants to bring he's taking advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping the nations as a tool and he wants to wreak havoc in the lives of people are we together part of the advantages of a true apostolic ministry is to have an eye that sees and the ability to perceive the impulses of the spirit part time and communicate to people the realities that are the emphasis of God for that moment that's why we pray for perception because there are many of us if your perception were alive you would have picked the signal let me tell you something it's important to gauge your spiritual growth don't let men clap you into spiritual mediocrity what are you an MOG for when you cannot perceive the impulses of the spirit what are you a campus fellowship president for or a pastor or an apostle when the things of the spirit happen discussions are going on in the realm of the spirit and your presence cannot be registered because you have not sustained an ability to rise beyond your flesh and understand the speakings of the spirit hallelujah ministry is not all about preaching but the ability to perceive the impulses of people when god makes you a leader he commits unto you the destinies of people it's your responsibility now to be in sync with the spirit habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 says i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower it says and i will see what the lord will say not hear what he will say see perceive conceive what he's saying When I saw this, my heart really broke. Especially when I saw faces I could recognize. I saw that people had gas out. Truly. Mothers who used to have a very strong prayer altar. I saw the thing going down. Usually it starts through carelessness. Here and there. Even if you don't pray one week, it doesn't matter. There's grace for me. I'll come again. And then before you know it, completely void of power. And you know the interesting thing? No matter how bad you are, the devil will never strike you. He's smart. If he strikes you, you will go for a retreat very fast. And you will come back. So he will allow you to keep moving. There is a threshold level. It's like a gauge in the spirit. You keep going down. He will not strike keep going down one day he will aim at you and if not for the mercy of god and the prophetic he will hit you bad blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who can hallelujah i will share with you three keys the lord revealed to me that if not managed will strengthen the power of darkness to cause the havoc that it plans to cause take note of this month july you see this month july there is there is intense warfare going on in the realm of the spirit those who are sensitive know those who are not sensitive just assume and move carelessly and foolishly until they become victims this month mark this month july you see is a month of intense spiritual building you need to build capacity for the months to come victory is assured but the strength of many will be tested in the months to come you will see this happen the strength of men of god the strength of people their their spiritual capacity will be tested 
and only those who have built fortification in the spirit the bible says for us to redeem the time take advantage of the time are we together so the devil is attacking the prayer lives of people dramatically you see he's not attacking it by stopping you from praying i will show you the things the first thing that the devil is using to sabotage the prophetic advancement of believers and the church listen is exhaustion the reality of the weariness of our bodies the reality of that weariness exhaustion psychological exhaustion physical exhaustion are we together so when people gas out they come to a point where it no longer makes sense to wait upon the lord and trust the lord because many hopes have been disappointed many dreams seemingly look like they are shattered people look at their experience versus their prophecy and it does not match and so many are fainting including the great ones who should stand to strengthen many people and there's nothing to be embarrassed there that's why god is opening us up to it so that we will rise is god blessing us exhaustion weariness that fatigue that spiritual fatigue where you want to study your bible and you just look at it and it looks like a body you want to open your bible and study it looks like a body you buy books but you don't read them you buy dvds but you can't watch them there seems to be a spirit that takes advantage of our humanity and our weariness so you are buying books you are buying tapes you are downloading messages those around will think you are taking advantage of them but you know that it's been a long time since you made contact with these resources not because you are not of god it's called weariness exhaustion even the young men shall faint and the youth will utterly fall he says that's the first thing that i saw that the devil is taking advantage of to destroy people just destroy people just destroy people the second thing that the lord revealed to me is financial limitation write it down i saw a lot of people whose focus had been distracted and the reason was because there were no resources i saw okay, churches groups people even people who used to participate actively in the house of god prayer meetings prayer groups the reality of the stress and strain that lack of finances brings a lot of people started asking themselves questions look we're, we're humans let's go and, and and solve our family needs first and it's a plot it's a plot by darkness are we together where believers go to pray and they can't pray because of financial weariness and even if they pray the entire circumference of their prayer is lamentation and a plea for open heavens you may not realize it but it's a strategy it's a strategy listen let me tell you something satan weighs the governments of nations like a treasure on a balance and manipulates them according to his desire this thing called mammon is satan's weapon of mass destruction mammon mammon that spirit the only spirit that jesus taught that you can worship either him or that spirit he never said satan he said you cannot serve two masters so in any way your servanthood must be registered either to god or to mama hallelujah in that vision i saw people losing jobs companies downsizing people there are not many times you hear me speak prophetically like this but you write it and see i saw it happening to people are we together several people confused even do you know that pastors and churches went down financially because their members 
they didn't have the means you know offerings and tithes and all of that and it was a weariness to people and subtly the teachings about spiritual growth the teachings about empowerment intimacy encounter began to diminish because the pastors were forced to have to continue talking about finances it became as though it was the only key that will have to keep the people coming to the churches are we together when i saw this thing my heart dropped and I said, my God, what is this? You have to do something about this nonsense because the devil wants to take advantage of the economic tide that is sweeping Africa and that spirit that is sweeping Nigeria, that bitterness, that offense. Many people no longer pay attention to God. You meet somebody and talk to him about spiritual growth and the person will even tell you to go away. Why? Because we have said it unapologetically in this ministry that when your finances is not secured it will affect your spiritual life there's no confusion about it i hope you believe what i'm sharing with you oh please you better do please you better do because it will happen the third thing i saw was it's like flies you know how house flies like a swarm of flies now there are times i've seen these things prophetically and i've shared them here over but i saw a swarm of flies just coming across regions ah, and i looked at it and the lord took my mind back to the plague one of the plague that happened in the days of moses when those the swamp of flies came around and began to consume people and i had in my spirit the ministry of the devourer manifesting as sicknesses manifesting as tragic events and ultimately death i saw this thing rampant manifestation of mysterious sicknesses that cannot be diagnosed in hospitals they will check you with machines and say nothing is, is happening blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Blessed are you For you come In the name of our God I'm not a prophet of doom But I saw the tears in Nigeria in the month of September it was almost unbearable I'm not just listen to me I've not finished preaching I'm not a prophet of doom but I saw it was bad economically and otherwise it was it was like this country was completely clueless and at a point of a mess I saw people being um, what do they call it laid off from work completely laid off husbands wives laid off their services were no longer needed in different sectors including government sectors they downsized people because they needed to accommodate what was happening are we together i saw an increase in crime rate theft stealing including stealing people not just stealing things stealing people Why is God revealing this to scare you? No. God is revealing this to strengthen you. He will never bring a prophecy without a strategy. Just keep following. There is always an exemption for the church. But the problem most times is we don't pay attention. There are people who hear what I'm saying now. I'm, I'm sorry, especially for elderly people. They just shut down and say all these idiots talking again. And then until it happens. And then we become victims. Of situations and circumstances you see let me tell you something prophecy prophecy in its purest form was designed not just to give people to make people privy to something that will happen the most important part of prophecy is the strategy for exemption not what will happen 
the strategy for exemption any true prophet that brings a word from the lord especially if it's a word that is on the negative side if it came from god god must be able to speak to his people and say this is a strategy you can choose it especially for certain things that are written judgments you cannot pray them away but there is a system like the flood of noah there was a system that was built called the ark like the passing of the angel of death upon egypt the mystery of the blood of the lamb and the passover right it was the mystery of exemption but you see the church we we have this ugly mentality which came from a misguided understanding of what the new testament teaches i can relate with god i don't need to hear anybody leave me alone if he's so god will speak to me if god has not spoken to me i will not listen let me tell you something listen i was teaching the school of ministry students our spiritual growth is based on our personal relationship with the lord jesus christ but the advancement of the kingdom is based on covenants you have to understand this your spiritual growth and my spiritual growth is based on my personal encounter my knowledge of who god is his ways and that's how i grow in the old testament it used to be through prophets and mediums but now the bible tells us that jesus has come as a mediator he's opened a new and living way to all of us we can now access god directly in terms of spiritual growth but the advancement of god's kingdom is not general god finds men and enters a covenant with those men to represent his dealings in a particular dimension and every time god wants to deal with the territory in that dimension it must come through those channels they are called spiritual tribes they represent the communication of god's purposes in a dimension so when you talk about faith every time god wants to bring his speakings as regards the word of faith there are spiritual channels he has entered a personal covenant with and align them to be able to communicate his purposes in that respect bishop oyedeko kenneth copeland you can trace that spiritual tribe and they represent his communications in that regard are we together there are other dimensions when the spirit of revival wants to fall upon the nation there are people who represent the spiritual tribe that communicates that reality to the world it's not general so your tapping into that possibility only becomes on the strength of your alignment with what god is doing when god wants to come in in the area of finances and prosperity i know that everyone will be blessed but there are people who have a personal covenant with god that represent his speakings in that regard you will never ignore their ministry and hear the current dealings of the spirit as far as that is concerned so the advancement of the kingdom is not based on personal relationship it's based on covenant god calls a man called abraham the first man in the bible who showed us that men can walk by faith with god are we together he is god's type of faith the only reason why we can tap into the possibilities of god as far as the blessing is concerned is on the strength of the covenant that god entered with one man called abraham are we together when god wanted to salvage a nation he used one man called Moses, entered a personal covenant with Moses that afforded Moses an unusual access to God beyond his personal spiritual growth because Moses himself did not make the cut to the promised land. How be it based on that covenant to an extent that although Moses may have failed spiritually in the book of Jude, an angel came to carry his body and satan still wanted the dead body because they represent systems they are not just human beings they are systems elijah was a man who represented god's system god's covenant of reformation god's covenant of of um forerunning revivals he's called elijah the tishbite are we together so by the time you allow people to begin to corrupt your mind 
and say don't make it look like only some people can hear God no the idea is not a show of superiority the idea is an election by grace where men have become like trees they are like spiritual vines and your connection to them is how you are able to tap into certain possibilities I've shared it with us here Abraham gave birth to Ishmael with Hagar is that true Hagar was crying Ishmael was crying but the Bible says God had the voice of the young lad not the voice of Hagar why because when God looked at Ishmael he saw Abraham and received and saw the covenant God more often times to say he blessed Solomon for the sake of his father David are we together when the kingdom was about to be advanced after Christ came he got 12 men entered a personal covenant with them listen let me tell you there is a difference between those apostles and us we are equal in Christ but they were men who entered a certain kind of covenant with God that represented the advancement of God's kingdom if Satan killed all those 12 apostles the kingdom could not be advanced because it was through them that it will be spread that's why God protected them angels had to come and open prisons to force them to go out are we together one man called John the beloved had a personal understanding it was his personal covenant with God that granted him access to show us the revelation the apocalypse the unfolding of prophecy there are still men like that on the earth. There are not many, but there are. In fact, the system of God's electing these men is always in twelves. There's no time to teach you on that. That God's apostolic governing system is always in twelves. So in, in regions, you will always find this number, twelve. The apostolic spiritual governing council of God. They may not even know themselves. But they represent God's order of activities. Are we together? But you see, when the devil wants to deceive you, he will bring pride and make you look like I can access the throne of God by myself. I, am, I don't need to hear anything. Even when God is giving a word of caution, most times we don't listen and we say, no, 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 no. I'm, nobody should do this and that and that. And then, you know, um, I don't even want to go into that, that teaching because it will take our whole time. As you know, I love the body of Christ. I am the last person who will fight the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ and I love the different dimensions of spiritual operation. But then I am always quick to attack imbalances especially when they get to a level where they can corrupt the authenticity of the work of believers the moment an imbalance gets so bad that it can bring you out of spiritual alignment it calls for concern are we together and one of it is of course as we know the concept of grace are we together now now when you understand the concept of grace and you isolate it with respect to other things that God is doing it becomes an error grace as a doctrine on its own is an error it only makes sense when you add it together and you piece it together with every other thing God is doing when you study the book of Ephesians the book of Ephesians theologically speaking contains the highest church truth are we together where Apostle Paul was teaching the church he was giving them certain doctrines the entire scope of a christian experience six chapters which were a communication of the entire activities of the believer so he starts theologically speaking with what we call sitting right you've heard you've read that and many of you have heard it in different messages it was that revelation came by a man called watchman knee watchman knee was the 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 apostle that God used to communicate the realities of redemption in a very balanced and authentic way to the body of Christ. And so that position of sitting, the Bible starts in the book of Ephesians, teaching us how, in fact, when it starts in chapter 1, 
it never talks about us it talks about christ and all that he has done when you start reading chapter 2 it now brings us into the scene right we are now raised up with christ so the revelation of god's grace is seen in chapter 1 and 2 and it is true that the foundation of a believer's life is predicated upon the grace of god there are certain things that we can never have ourselves like righteousness it is impossible for anybody to have righteousness by himself the bible says the best of our righteousness is as filthy rags and do not confuse righteousness and uprightness they are not the same righteousness and uprightness are not the same righteousness is a gift from god uprightness is our response the advantage our our work of faith i'm just giving us are, are you getting blessed i just want to establish a few things before we continue it's very very important so the bible starts teaching us on the grace of god and all the possibilities that come with that grace all that christ had done for us in his death his burial his resurrection and his ascension into heaven in fact it was on the strength of that that paul began to teach in chapter in verse 17 he said for this cause i have a passion for you understanding this this is the foundation of your victory in christ and for this cause i paul bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you right the spirit of revelation you know and understanding that your eyes been enlightened or flooded with light that you may know certain things one is the hope of your calling and then you know the power that raised christ that was exalted when christ was raised from the dead you know and, and all of that and paul begins to speak he knew that the church needs to know that but paul did not just walk there he didn't stop there he began to talk about what is called theologically our walk of faith right character now you taking advantage of the grace of god i told you there's there are two dimensions to the grace of god there is the grace of god as unmerited access and there is the grace of god as power to live like christ they are all called grace don't just confuse them grace does not just mean what god has done and we receive by faith there is a dimension of grace that represents everything christ has done that we could not do and he gave it to us we receive it by faith but there is a dimension of grace that empowers us to do we will do but it's not by our strength are we together and then he wraps up the book of ephesians with what is called the the you know uh, standing and then our, our, our walk and then you know sitting and standing then it talks of spiritual warfare our ability to contend against powers and principalities and listen every doctrine that must build a believer please hear me every doctrine that must build a believer must sustain all these components whenever there is a deviation from this pattern it will lead to error if you try to teach people how to do warfare how to do character and you forget the grace of god you will lead them into error and legalism are we together when you try to bring isolate the doctrine of holiness without giving men the foundation of faith you will lead to self-righteousness which does not hold any weight in the spirit and so it must be in that order the first thing believers must understand about god is not warfare is the grace of god and that's encapsulated in what we call the gospel of salvation a revelation of the substitutionary work of uh, uh, jesus christ which is a reflection of the love of the father so when we see that grace then our walking right now by faith is our own participation that's called the gospel of the kingdom our reward in gratitude and honor for that sacrifice for us and then our standing it says haven't done all to stand stand Now, let me tell you something. The part of this truth you ignore is the part the devil will use to destroy your life. You can't choose sitting as it were. Grace. You can't choose kingdom just like that and isolate it. You can't choose deliverance just like that. There's a series on it and you can get it after the service. It's called the full gospel. Where all these doctrines were examined one by one. There are imperfections, there are imbalances to the end that the bride of Christ will become perfect. 
he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city equal in length equal in breadth equal in height and part of the possibilities in the kingdom is the foundation of the apostles and the prophets christ himself being the chief cornerstone god stations these men so that they can communicate the speakings of the spirit and it is that same order of god's system that was mimicked by the antichrist system when you read the book of revelations from uh, chapter 13 and the rest the bible tells us that satan empowered the beast the beast will now empower the false prophets the same order the same way god empowers his apostles and prophets to communicate certain things satan empowers the beast who empowers the false prophets and then they continue carrying out their agenda so there is a system spiritual growth is not haphazard you don't choose how you want it's not even just how your pastor said so there is an irrefutable pattern that has not changed it did not change just because um god jesus christ came and died for us no it's an eternal pattern it was carved out of who god is not what he's doing are we together there are people who believe in miracles but they do not believe in the prophetic and the apostolic that lapse is satan's authorization in their life there are people who do not believe in the gift of the spirit but they are well-meaning people that lapse is satan's you know advantage in their life there are people for instance who believe in grace but they may not believe in holiness and righteousness and all of that and satan takes advantage of it there are people who believe in deliverance but may not believe in the grace of god and satan takes advantage and they are forever fighting every and anything the key is not exemption the key is balance everybody say balance say it again balance the key is balance because all of these things are components of the same system hallelujah and so i want you to believe the prophetic is real it is still functional it did not die with the new testament the prophetic is real now i know that here and there people may have exaggerated certain dimensions of it but it's not enough reason for us to throw the baby and the bad water lives can be rescued when we understand what god is saying and the bible says he that hears he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches so if he's talking to one person he's talking to the ecclesia the church hallelujah pray in one minute and say lord i hear what you are saying i'm not rebellious i hear what you are saying you are speaking to the church i am part of the church and i hear what you are saying i hear what you are saying i'm not a rebel i hear what you are saying i hear what you are saying go ahead and pray strategies right now that God revealed to me and then we'll take some time and really pray I want us to seriously pray tonight and God will grant us that grace are we together if you fight economic empowerment get set to struggle spiritually promise made a statement when he came to receive the offering and he said having abundance of supplies will increase your prayer life and minimize your prayer points how true you see let me tell you something this system that we live in cosmos is a system that was designed intelligently 
Are we together? God made the heavens and the earth, but the system, the social strata, and its civilization was nicely modeled and built by Lucifer, the custodian of the Antichrist system. And he built it such that our civilization will only thrive on economic empowerment. Please listen. Are we together now? And part of the imbalance that we're talking about is what has produced believers who are prayerful, loving, but we have not paid attention to our finances. And in this season, our flaw is becoming obvious. Are we together? Many anointed churches are seen right now that they cannot buy generator for their prayer meetings. Many churches that will have to depend on rent or something. The man, the landlord may be an unbeliever and he may get up under the influence of a strange spirit and say no more use of this venue. It is locked and what happens? The sheep is scattered. It's a strategy by the pit of hell because the Bible says the borrower is and will always be slave to the lender. So our concept of empowerment must be seen not just as a desire to be rich and to be money mongers. Please get this. If that is your thinking, you are already in error. The concept of empowerment is to rise to a level where we overcome the influence of mammon. That spirit that is, is compelling the nations to worship her. There is a spirit. It's called mammon. If you have not seen that spirit, just look around our government and you will know that that spirit is being worshipped. The obsession for the worship of images and the worship of Lucifer did not start in our generation. Right? Remember when the king built 90 solid feet, go and said at the sound of music, everybody will bow down and worship. And your survival in that territory depended on your willingness to bow. Some gentlemen said, oh king, no. They found another system of exemption and they changed the tide. Businesses are bowing already. Churches are bowing already. Systems are coming to their knees. I've heard men of God who didn't used to talk about certain things. And I've been surprised hearing the way they are beginning to be so obsessed about financial principles that are not consistent with the ways of the Lord. And the reason is because for every leader, what faith is to the realm of the spirit, that's what finance is to this realm. You must pay the school fees of your child. Are we together? And that reality is beginning to punish a lot of people to the detriment of their spiritual life. But everybody say there is a way out. Shout it, say there is a way out. The way out of financial hardship in this season goes beyond investments, goes beyond business. Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. You see, if you do investments, you need money to make money. Is that true? You need money to make money. If you do business, you are selling products, you are selling services and that's all right. But the problem is that the products you are selling have a fixed price and cannot be manipulated ordinarily. Are we together? Meaning there is a limit to what can come into your hand. There is a limit to patronage and all of that. But the key, I've said it again and again, is when you become the product yourself. Not just that you offer services, you become the service. When you become valuable, not just have things that are valuable, but you yourself as a person, you rise to a point where you become an epitome of value. You have entered your financial Sabbath, I guarantee you. The most expensive commodity, for instance, on earth is the anointing. And when you have the anointing, we used to jokingly say it sometimes with a Jimmy, how that we watch people who we know do not know one, maybe one twentieth of the business principles we should know. But because they possess the most expensive commodity on earth which is the anointing and its ability to provide supernatural solutions they exempt themselves from the tide and the grip of mammon 
So God's call for us in this season as believers to exempt us from the economic turmoil that is whipping the nations and that will inevitably come and lash a lot of people in Nigeria is not only to surround ourselves with valuable things. Valuable things are important, but be the value yourself. And we have that advantage because the Holy Ghost is here to help us. That's why I said your greatest business strategy in this season is to labor in the spirit and carry something authentic and supernatural. You will enter the Sabbath of your life. Do you believe what I'm saying? Please believe it. I can sell palm oil. Is it not when you need palm oil that you buy it? Are we together? I have palm oil in industrial scale. But until there is a demand. But you see, let me tell you something. The, rev the world revolves around certain things that will never um, run out of demand. One of it is the anointing. One of it is the realities that come from the life of a man in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Such that even in your business, you are offering much more than the product. First and foremost, you have risen to a point where you have become so valuable. Then any other valuable thing around you only becomes a support, not the basis for your confidence. Do you understand what I'm saying? As harsh as the economic climate is, there are people moving as if it doesn't exist in Nigeria. Please, don't ever deceive yourself that everybody is crying. Let me tell you why we all look like we are crying. Because people have found out that if you don't cry with others, the, the anger and the pain, they will fight you back. So they just cry and say, Kai, honestly, God is, is faithful. But the truth is not everybody is crying. There are people who are far from crying. They have found the key. Every one naira that seems to disappear did not go out of earth. It's somewhere. It's in the hands of those who have paid the price to become valuable. I made up my mind that as God grants grace, I will pay the price to be so valuable. Because by God's grace, my life and this ministry should not come to a point where we are stranded and the purposes of the kingdom becomes jeopardized simply because of a, a God called Mammon. Look at me. Do you know that there are many of our families we have tried to bring them maybe for the meetings and they may not want to listen. But how many of you know that if we buy something tomorrow and we say everybody should come and line up? Vim, Omo, sewing machine, bikes. You will see people who swore that they will never come here. You see them standing. Even if they will not use it, they will get it and go and sell it and quickly use the money. That's the reality of economic hardship. And from the vision the Lord showed me, listen, people will do things that you will not imagine. Do you know in the Bible, women ate their children? The Bible says, can a mother forget her child? This one, a mother remembered as she ate the child. That's what finances can do. You talk about prostitution is child's play. When poverty hits people, they will make calls that they, they had not made for years. You see, if you do not empower your people, don't blame them for perversion. And I found out that you do not judge spiritual seriousness just from the face. You can see someone praying, but knows that there are seven people whose daily bread are dependent upon them. They will go and sleep with any allergy anywhere and bring the money. They will even bring it and so project 10,000. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus, I exempt myself from this economic hardship. Say it in the name of Jesus, I exempt myself from this economic hardship. The Bible says when men say there is a casting down for you, it says you will say there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. But if you don't believe this, sooner or later, you will have to face the bitter reality of this prophetic word. Because it will happen. 
I want to be honest with you. I'm not one person who just prophesies everything I see, but I, I, I salute the government of this nation. I know that they are doing their best with what they know and whatever covenant they are part of, but I, I want to tell you one truth here. I don't see transformation happening very soon. Let me tell you the truth. All that, I've, and, and I, I, I don't mean to insult anybody, but a lot of people have given so many prophecies, you are going to see boom, not 2016. It will happen for those who have the strategies. But as far as the world is speaking, you have not seen tears. Wait till July finishes. I've, I'm telling you what I've seen. You will see people sit down and cry like children. I'm not talking of illiterates. You will sit down and gather your degree and shed tears on it. But for those who are hearing this thing and will pay the price to become valuable, I tell you, you will rise as if the devil does not exist. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with level of education. Hear me. It has nothing to do with gender. It has everything to do with having perceptions and receiving God's strategy for now. Don't sit down and confuse yourself saying this and that. I'm an astute businessman. Just keep quiet and let the Lord speak to you. I'm not daft. I understand business. If you hear me speak to you like this, it is what the Lord is saying per season. Let me tell you, what will give you bread is what God is saying, not what you know. What God is saying, the direction of God is the direction of favor. The direction of God is the direction of life. It's God speaking to us. You must challenge yourself to be valuable in this season. The devil is a liar. Kai, the devil is a liar. There is a spirit in Asia called Quatsi Quata. That's what the Bible calls Mammon. It's a spirit. Many of you have seen it. It's the image of a flying serpent, a flying dragon. That is the exact picture of Mammon. It's a spirit that will compel the nations to bow to its leadership. I assure you, many people will bow. The concept of 666 is not just something you receive on your hand and receive on your forehead. It's already happening. When a system compels you, receiving the mark is not just having a physical inscription. It's coming under the sovereign rule of that system so that you have no options. You have received the mark. Are we together? But God is going to grant us grace. We will come out in another dimension. No, 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 no. Listen, let me tell you. I don't know about you. But Koinonia will not bow to this system. There is a superior covenant. We have the rod of a higher priesthood. No devil, no spirit, no system. Will make us change our message. To tone down the apostolic work God has given. So that we can attract certain kinds of wealthy individuals. That's what is happening to pastors right now. There are certain messages you cannot preach. If it is not rich man friendly. Get set to sweep your church by yourself. So you have to tone down certain things. There are certain mainstream TV programs right now. Where you are not permitted to teach certain topics. It used to be that you can't mention the name of Jesus. But now they've taken it to another level. Certain topics should not be taught on mainstream. If you teach about pressure, how to manage it, how love, how people can, can come together, a gospel of universalism, marry anything, anyhow, anywhere, doesn't matter. You are, you are welcome. The mainstream invites you. But the moment you have an outspoken voice, the system will strangle you. And economic empowerment... Lack of it is Satan's weapon of mass destruction. It's worse than backsliding. Are we together? Pray in one minute and say, I must be exempted in this season. Please pray. 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 are you praying oh every time the devil
devil tried to bring his arsenal and fight the church God is always one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead Keep praying. Raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Now, I tell you, we will not bow. Hey! Raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in all of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in all of you. The grace to be valuable that when men say there is a casting down the bible says your gates shall be continually open it will not be short day or night right that you will receive the forces of the gentiles that's what the bible says you can be valuable and exempt yourself from the economic whiplash hear me I'm not talking of business. I'm not talking of investments. I'm talking of being so valuable. Carrying something that cannot be found in the earth realm. Carrying something that is not of an earthly origin. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Sit down. I told you there will be lots of impartations we pray. My passion is that something will come upon your life. Listen, let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, when this glory of God comes on a man, it will change you. You will veto laws and walk as if Satan does not exist. Never trivialize the anointing. It's a big deal. I'm not talking of being anointed where you are competing with people and fighting. No. God raises you by his grace and puts you in a pedestal. No mammon. No devil. No policy affects you. It's a realm. It's a dimension. We frown at the supernatural. Because we think we're in an intellectual realm. Many times when pastors speak, a lot of business people just say, these guys are daft, they don't know what they're saying. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The voice of God. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. That is why I will not want. The Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd guides. He knows where the green grasses are. He says, he leads me. He leads me. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Right? I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to profit. 
Some of you, this is what you will need. You will step into a place and men will look for you. Who said where you are staying is too far? You have not carried something. When you carry something, listen, let me tell you when you know you are anointed. When no price is too much to meet you, you are really anointed. When no price is too much to meet you. Have you watched people during foil scarcity? They have their money but they still kill and they are not angry. That's how valuable foil is. When you get to a point where people don't mind trekking from anywhere to say, I have learned that the wisdom of God is upon your mouth and we have come as a nation. That's where Joshua Selman is going to. Listen, Koinonia is not an exclusive reserve of preachers. Power was never for preachers. Power is for them who will survive in this season because there are gates that you must stand against and it takes the anointing it takes unction not stories not preaching unction listen churches are closing because there's no results we argue and say it doesn't matter but they are closing the devil is closing them the devil is closing them people are coming in with devilish policies against the church you know why they have not seen our relevance by the time a city cannot do without the church no devil will close it no devil will close it listen so the key is not just making noise the key is rising to that point please hear me when you become valuable listen listen if I give you 500,000 to go and invest, you can make money. If I give you a product to sell, if this is 100 Naira, everybody you sell to, you will sell at 100 Naira. So you move at their pace. But when you become valuable, your reward is left to the perception of your benefactors. One person can see you and give you 100,000 because that's what he perceives. The next person can give you 10 million because that's what he perceives is the key to accelerating ourselves to enter that wealthy place let me tell you some levels of businesses are too slow to supply the funds required for kingdom advancement it takes being valuable the queen of sheba there was no word on solomon she carried her treasure to solomon there are shebas there are cyruses that must arise with their treasure and I'm praying prophetically that someone tonight an unction an unction an unction from the throne an unction from the throne will come upon someone that will change your life where your voice becomes like the voice of God Listen, let me tell you this there will be no longer begging in the church all that depending on the world system no the key is not to sit down waiting for someone to employ you as good as that is the key has been given to us the Holy Ghost handing you the keys that can open any door and you will watch mammon mammon will watch you and not be able to do anything listen I saw this in the vision that the Lord showed me many people will be constrained they, they are like it will be as if they should 
die because the doors are closed. Let me quickly talk about the two points. We're rounding up. There is a key that will conquer exhaustion in this season. Please write it down. There are many weary people and it's natural to be weary. But let me tell you the key. Please hear me. I want you to write it. It's a very simple key. Spend time praying in the spirit. Spend time, I didn't say pray in the spirit at will, carelessly, when you want. Spend time praying in the spirit. I want you to fan your prayer life in a dimension that will be too hot for any devil. Bishop Oyedeko said, no matter how mad a man is, no matter how mad a man is, he will not enter fire in the name of madness. Are we together? You want to survive the tides? Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, your prayer altar must be like the seven times hotter fire that they threw the Hebrew boys. The Bible says those who threw them themselves were burned to death. Are we together? You lie down on your bed, you turn a little shakata bakata batata. Where your prayer creates an effect. You enter your house as you are shouting in tongues. Something is happening. You are shaking gates. Prayer, read your Bible, has always been the key to true apostolic and prophetic revival. When you pray, let me tell you, no matter how dead your spiritual life is, when you invest in prayer, you will burn that devil to nonsense. He must give you more. I don't mean prayer that you are just asking and begging and crying. That's why I said pray in the spirit. Because for many of us, our prayer in understanding is petition and languishing and pain and anger. But you lock yourself. And you pray. I'm not just saying when you are in your prayer room, you are moving on the road. You are praying beneath your voice. Somebody drops a charm at you, it backfires on him. By night he has become mad. Are we together? Someone is carrying a talisman and you are sitting down and you are going to Sabo. He will drop at main gates because the fire is too hot. He makes, listen, he makes his ministers wind spirits, right? His angel spirits and his ministers flames. I've said it again. I pity the herbalist that will make concoction and call my name. As is, it's not only that it will not work. If it didn't work, he has still insulted me. He will fry to death physically. Physically. I'm not, I'm not motivating you. You think they've not tried it? How can you be leading a ministry like this and not tried it? Only God knows till we get to heaven before we know how many poisons we have eaten. Let me tell you something. When your prayer life is alive and healthy, Anytime you are walking, just imagine in your head fire, literal fire. Are we together? John Wesley said, Set yourself on fire, and the whole world will come to watch you burn. Set yourself on fire. Stop discussing things with people who cannot help you. Go and lock yourself. Your body says, I'm tired. You say, you are joking. Mm. As you begin to pray, you will first feel weak for a few minutes. Keep praying. It's normal. Just keep praying. Ah, when you touch that escape velocity, you will touch a realm where strength you cannot explain will land upon you. You plan to pray for one hour. You will stretch five hours. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Nobody starts praying just out of comfort. It's like you are starting shake it you are tired you are moving you are tired keep praying don't say ah this and that the devil will tell ah, there's something in the fridge have you don't just keep praying oh apostle i'm praying and thinking about women keep praying that's what is supposed to solve there is a level to which the fire will be too hot your flesh must burn 
and allow your spirit access. Listen, when the Holy Ghost is called fire, it's not just what we do in church, fire, fire, no. It's real fire. Fire is a mystery. Those who will pray in this season will record unbelievable breakthroughs. Believe me. Travel. You pray in the spirit. Thank God we have a very robust prayer department. You come there and stretch it out with destiny. After two hours, your antenna is to the heavens. Any demon is flying above you, they hang there. They hang there because you are passing. You are not even praying. The fire will roast every devil around anywhere. That's what we are talking about. Listen, many of us are too cold. That's why the devil will come and sit on your destiny. And it will look like nothing is happening. There are cold churches. A spirit will arise from somewhere and just come and sit upon the man of God and his wife and his family. But for Koinonia, no way. Shout no way. When there is fire burning, somebody will come with migraine. As he's crossing that, 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 that junction to enter Koinonia, the migraine will just leave. That's fire speaking. That's fire speaking. It works. But if you walk it, it's not a gift. It's a labor in the spirit. This is the labor dimension of spiritual growth. Men will pay you. Let me tell you. Your, your, your job is to just become genuinely anointed by the power of God and you watch what God will do in your life it's what a Jimmy calls transformational wealth that dimension of wealth that is tied to people rewarding you because the last time they shook your hand every gate opened every every gate opened just by shaking you do you think they want to be your friend? absolutely absolutely praying in the spirit becoming valuable praying in the spirit becoming valuable the third key in this season is the power of corporate fellowship. The power of corporate fellowship. If the devil can successfully isolate you in this season, just know that you are quarter to die. Are we together? There is a difference between isolation and solitude. Once the devil wants to destroy you, let me tell you what he will do. Look up, please. He will use offense. Huh? And push away everybody, every intercessor in your life, you will fight with him. Everybody who has grace and love for you, you will fight with him. He will push every relevant person, push you to the wall alone. And then that's where you sit down there and become a victim of his assaults. A corporate life is a powerful key in the realm of the spirit. The power of a corporate life that you come together. And where I am almost giving up, as you land with your fire, based on unity of faith and the spirit of brotherhood, before my fire jacks up, your fire is roasting every devil that I came with. Are we together? Corporate fellowship. How good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that flows from the head of Aaron. That priest down to his bed, down to his cat, he said, For there the Lord has commanded the blessing. Corporate life. I'm a man of God of myself, you will pay for it in this season. You need corporate grace. Corporate grace. Corporate grace. Because no matter what you have seen, you will need that. Sometimes that corporate grace will help you confirm if the path you are walking is of God. The devil can isolate you and you just keep moving and you are flattering yourself until you land in fire. Are we together? But Koinonia, we are going to pray. I don't know about you, but for as long as you are genuinely connected to this ministry, you must be exempted from this nonsense that is ravaging nations. It's like an angel of death is entering families. Bam! Sickness incurable diseases have you heard recently how people are dying just from headache they say somebody has headache before they rush into the hospital he's dead oh, come on a woman is pregnant 
just when labor starts she becomes deaf and dumb then she dies we are going to drive that devil out of Zaria are you ready to pray no we are going to pray there is a church in Zaria and we will pray we will pray and drive it far and say we surround this city with a mystery that makes any enchantment not to be able to thrive we represent God's seat of, of governance in this city and we must pray there's no room for carelessness we must pray lift your voice and pray in tongues for a while make sure you participate everybody don't be tired we are praying young and old everyone pray Are you praying? Hallelujah. Anointing for Anointing for Let the power of the Holy Ghost Anointing like you to sing it as a prayer from the depth of your heart. family members are depending on us not our preaching the activity of the power of God upon our lives there are people standing here let me tell you listen this thing that I saw there are families I know I saw it happening to in that vision and I like you to pray you are not desiring the anointing out of covetousness you need it there are there are thrones and dominions that must be subdued an apostle Joshua Selma may not be there. The goal is not to have one superstar. The goal is that you carry fire and go to your regions and begin to speak the purposes of God. And while you are doing that, God will compel men to lift you. It has nothing to do with ministry. Please, I'd like you to pray and say, Father, let a strange unction fall upon my life. Oh, let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. In this season, they that will survive must be men of power authentic unction unction beyond imagination unction beyond argument unction beyond argument unction beyond argument ta 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 ba ta ka para ka ta lord send that fire upon my life send that fire 
upon my gifts send that fire upon my degree send that fire upon my phd send that fire upon my business send that fire upon my company send that fire upon my church send that fire upon my family Oh yes, send that fire upon my life. Send that unction upon my life. The earnest expectation of creation awaits my manifestation. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. 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 Hallelujah. Listen, listen. One encounter with the anointing can give you an open door that your lifetime will not exhaust it if you believe what I'm telling you. One encounter, one, one encounter can open a financial door for you that will wipe your tears. One encounter can make you a friend to somebody who will pay your being a friend with him forever one encounter listen listen hallelujah i'd like you to pray a prayer you've heard us pray it here but i want you to pray it with all your heart everyone appointed to reward my grace i compel them to appear go ahead and pray it's not enough to have an anointing there are men who can reward your grace. There are institutions. Send them, oh God, to Koinonia. Send them to your people. Men and women. Who need what you carry? Your entrepreneurial anointing. Your leadership anointing. Your spirit of motherhood. Send them to my life, oh God. Men and women who have what it takes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Look up. Look up. I know very anointed men and women. They love God passionately, but they have never met the people assigned to bless them. You don't preach for money. You don't carry the anointing just for money. But you see, God designed it in such a way that as you dispense the realities of the kingdom, there is a feedback system that should empower you so you continue being effective. Are we together? Listen. The day you stand in the presence, you see, many of us are around people who love our gifts, but do not have the grace to reward it. Are we together? You can labor and pray and fast and go and preach somewhere and someone will pat your back and say, wow, you are an awesome man of God. I've never seen a man of God in this state like you. That's not enough reward. But there is a way you can have an encounter and someone will come and bring a generator, buy you a car, and say, what does it take to stop you from thinking about the finances? If you are such a voice, I should sponsor you rising to any level. There are men like that. There are some of us, the value you have now, let me tell you sincerely, the value you have now, you, is, is enough for you to be blessed forever. 
but you have not encountered those who have what it takes listen there are pastors hear me who until you preach somewhere where your helpers are that's what will expand your church all of a sudden it will be like they are hearing you for the first time yes i know there are millions of men of god in nigeria but there are others assigned to honor you 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 can be singing singing songs laboring and traveling from pillar to post but if you can discern god can send you to somebody who has the means but needs your music when it was time for the lifting of david a spirit was upon saul and saul needed a musician to drive it all of a sudden they went and fished out david how many times did david play for saul when he played just once Saul loved him there are circles that I have entered and I ministered once and God connected me to people who will bless me forever and that day it wasn't even as if I was saying anything it was just that God connected me to people who will be blessed tomorrow we are in Asaba a mighty meeting happening in the stadium and we are going to minister they started preparing for this meeting tomorrow one year one year they came to book one year in advance they have been praying logistics publicity all over the city and we are going to go and storm the gates of hell there is some you are not assigned everywhere look you need to pray that those assigned to honor what you carry otherwise you'll be frustrated trying to be everything to anybody lift your voice one more time and say direct them oh god direct them direct them to me oh in this season direct my blessers direct those you have sent to be blessed by my ministry direct those who have been sent to be blessed by my business shabakata posh on the process seeker ruta sabarikata direct them you are a prophet but not to everyone that god will bring the ears of those who have been anointed to hear your voice you are an apostle not to everyone that God will direct the people the institutions hallelujah we're going to be praying that in this season please hear me that in this season god will grant you grace to have passion for the house of god that you will not allow the devil corner you somewhere and destroy you and destroy your family he said as for me and my house i don't know about you but as for me i have made up but the bible says they that be planted no flimsy excuses Oh, we are tired today. They that be planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the courts of our God. I'd like you to pray passionately and say, Lord, grace and passion for your house. Grace and passion. Grace and passion for your house. Supernatural grace. Supernatural passion for your house. For your house. For your house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are rounding up. One category of people who will be exempted from any nonsense in this season are passionate and addicted soul winners. Listen, listen. There was a time they needed money to pay for tax it was a period that they needed money desperately they had come to collect tax and jesus said go and catch fish and fish in the bible is symbolic of souls when they caught those souls in that mission work they found money 
as they were preaching God provided a way as they were preaching fishers of men they went to fish and they said open the mouth of that fish as that fish testifies the greatness of God and confesses with his mouth the lordship of Christ you engage a law automatically that brings you wealth hear me please believe what I'm saying there are many people here who love God we are prayer warriors but we are not so winners you stand up alone and drag yourself to koinonia you wave your roommates you wave your family members you come here and get blessed while you are getting blessed the devil is using them to destroy your blessing you go back home a soul winner is an intercessor lord you must change my family members there are people who can come on friday and say look i'm going around this place have you heard about koinonia you've never really come you see this this our shame big boy big girl there are no big boys and big girls in the kingdom it takes passion when you are doggedly involved in soul winning you schedule seasons of exemption i can tell you this i can tell you this are we together you are in your office you are there and you leave every other person someone tells you uh -uh, um the devil is trying to manipulate my life. Oga Jordan did something today that blessed me so, so much. Some people came to his shop to buy books. And the way they began to talk, at once he knew it was a demonic situation. God has given you spiritual intelligence. There is a way you hear people talk. What they are saying in the realm of the spirit is, I need help. You just listen to them and say bye-bye. The moment they began to talk, you know, Oga Jordan said this and that. They wanted to see me and he said, oh, it may not be easy to see me. But he bought communion and took a bike and came and said I should pray on the communion. And returned it back and gave the people. And I was looking at him. I said, why won't he explode? Let me tell you. If God, if your life becomes an epitome of support for God's interest, forget about begging. This is the God I serve. You may not know all you need to know. But that your life can find space to bring God. This is how this ministry started. Every night, somebody was dragging somebody. Come and get filled with the Holy Ghost. Come and get born again. You may not have the power to change them. But you have what it takes to invite them. Some of you, 50 naira is what you need to draw a soul. Ah, Koinonia has a crowd. It's not about competition of crowd. It's about destinies that must change. Are we together? What's wrong with calling your loved ones and say there is there is a platform now to hear this online? Since you think you are too sick to come, connect to the miracle service. You see, let me tell you something. This is what we do that produces some of the results. Anybody that is too big to win souls is too big to experience the favor of God. If you are too big to win souls, too big to win souls. Ah, I preached and they insulted me. So what? Didn't Jesus say it? Blessed are you when men persecute and revile you. Rejoice! For so they did the prophets and the rest. You have social media platforms that you can use as platforms to draw people to the house of God where they can be blessed. You see, until you see yourself as part of what God is doing, you are not entitled to his blessings. When you see yourself as somebody who just comes for koinonia, leave the workers and the ministers. When you exempt yourself, you also exempt yourself from that covenant of blessing. He said, if you are the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. I'd like you to pray before I speak over our lives. Lord, grace to be intentional about saving people from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray grace to be a conduit for someone to be filled with the holy ghost grace to be a channel for someone to receive the teachings that will change their life
Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I want to pray for you. And I want you to believe it. Praise the Lord. This prayer is, is not just, I know that I pray in partitions every time. Don't you think you are getting the same thing? You see, one thing with grace is when it comes. Yes, I know that some of us, it's not yet time for manifestation. But you can begin to do something with it. Are we together? One day, instead of dragging somebody to go for prayer department prayer, before the prayer department, teach the person on the baptism in the Holy Ghost and try to lay hands on the person by yourself before you go. Everybody must have room to start something. If someone is sick, don't just say, here is apostle's number. Here is head of department prayer. Here is sister head of department. Here is a Jimmy or Pastor Femi or Pastor Alpha or every, any, any other person. No, you can tell him, look, I agree with you. I am part of a family that has a healing anointing and I want to agree with you. If you pray with the person and nothing happens, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Everybody you see had an occasion to begin to exercise themselves. Anointings are useless if you are not ready to use them. God does not waste. He said, gather the fragments that there be no waste. Are we together? I want to pray for you. There are three things I'm going to pray for you. The anointing for uncommon wisdom. That's the first thing I'll pray for you. Let me tell you, I know many foolish people. It's not by age. I have seen this ancient wisdom upon my life. As young as I look, I have seen it. I know it is real. I saw it in people. I coveted it with my heart. And the day it landed upon me, I knew. The anointing for wisdom. Strategies. Two. The anointing for favor. You need favor in this season. Favor is not when you do things by yourself. Favor is when God raises men to do things for you. It's not about having money. It's about the appearance of men in your life to wipe your tears. It's called favor. Number three. The supernatural power of the Holy Ghost to provide solutions to people. There are sick people. There are oppressed people. Waiting for Joshua Selman to heal everybody's idolatry. That's not God's design. God's design is that you become an extension of what we represent. That when we cannot be there, you can arise. They tell you a woman is failing to give birth. You lay hands on her stomach and ask her to give birth there and then. No CS. It has nothing to do with being a pastor or being a prophet. You don't need to carry any ministry. You just need to carry the spirit of grace. Lift your hands. The spirit of wisdom. Spirit of wisdom. There is a level of wisdom that is beyond age. It's not found in the realm of men. It comes from heaven. Job was asked a question. When cometh this wisdom? Where is it? Where is it? They ask the place of the dead and they say it's not with us. We don't know where it is. He said only God knows the place thereof. Hmm? Whose price is higher than rubies. He said doth not wisdom cry. Her price is far above rubies. Right? He said by me kings reign and princes decree justice. With me are riches, wealth and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The grace for supernatural wisdom. Uncommon wisdom. Let it come upon your life in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. From today, you begin to function at a frequency of wisdom. That no man will begin to gain say or resist. Number two, the Bible says, All who saw Esther loved her. Favor. There is such a thing as favor. There is such a thing as divine, supernatural, not man made, arranged favor. Favor from strangers. When those who know you favor you, it makes sense. When a stranger is moved by the Holy Ghost to serve the purposes of God in your life, your business, and your ministry. Then you know that that's favor. Receive that grace for favor. 
receive that grace for favor receive that grace for favor listen some of you before the end of this night strange testimonies strange testimonies you are thinking of buying a bible someone brings it you are thinking of buying something someone brings it now that's favor you are looking for a place to pray someone says i have my room anytime you need to pray i give you that's favor you are trusting god to travel for a meeting somewhere you are stranded in car someone says i will sponsor you pay for your flight and bring you back receive that order of testimonies in the name of jesus christ oh it will come upon you believe me believe me you will carry it bodily and go out with it hallelujah the last prayer lift your hands this one will come upon you big listen we need miracles signs and wonders the ministry of miracles has not ended signs and wonders the sick healed the oppressed delivered you command breakthroughs in the lives and destinies of men don't just waste words as you speak to people you influence the realm of the spirit to provide solutions for people lift your hands father i pray over your people that ordinary life that ordinary preaching that doing things ordinary from today step into the supernatural step into the supernatural step into the supernatural the unction for signs wonders and miracles let it come upon your life right now the ability to see the ability to speak the prophetic word of god ay, 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 ay. it will come on some of you i release it upon you in the name of jesus listen some of you from today as you stand close to people just contact with them it will be like a register open in the realm of the spirit receive that grace in the name of jesus I pray for you the way God can have respect for the prayer of a man and solve another person's problem because of who prayed in the Bible God had respect for the prayers of men Elijah prayed right what it was Elijah that prayed that God will open the eyes of his servant he didn't ask the servant whether he had faith he had a covenant of answered prayer and because of it a man's eyes was open i pray for you in the name of jesus christ one more time may your eyes be open may your eyes be open hallelujah before anything will happen to you and to your loved ones may it never escape your vista you will see it hallelujah and i want to pray for people who the devil has manipulated their visions to a point that they no longer trust what they see you started seeing well but the devil wanting to confuse you shakatabata i tell you i see an anointing coming on people the devil wanted to confuse you and started aberrating your vision and what you started seeing stopped coming to pass in the name of jesus christ i pray for you right now receive clarity 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 by the power of the holy ghost we correct that anomaly in the name of jesus i don't know the spirit that is lingering around the body of christ giving men bad visions taking advantage of their prophetic dimensions and confusing them so that their words will not be heard 
and so that their visions will not be seen some of you now you have closed yourself to visions because the things you saw look corrupted i pray for you again may that spirit that manipulates your visions be casted out of your life right now let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell lord i'm singing this to you let my life be the temple of your spirit let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. This is my prayer, Lord. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit. Once again, fill this temple, Lord. Fill this vessel, Lord. Fill this temple, Lord. Fill this vessel, Lord. For I am nothing without you, Lord. You are the power at work in me. Yeah. You're my life, you're my breath, you're my all. You're my all. your presence that grants us the ability to minister to your people Lord I thank you for the blessings of your presence thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit my friend my teacher my advocate my strengthener stand by the one who turns every wilderness into a fruitful vine and every fruitful vine into a forest. Lord, I thank you. It's all about you. All this is for you, truly. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. I see if you should do things my way. You alone are God and I surrender. Lord, we are standing before your presence. We have come to meet he that is able to change. My Father, there are sick bodies in this place. There are oppressed people. Joshua Selman cannot help them. Lord, let the people know I'm not the healer. Let the people know I'm not the deliverer. Let the people know there is nothing I have that did not come from you that I'm a product of your mercy and your grace and that you desire to bring everyone into this realm of intimacy 
Masi parande kabos Lagwe da bakurata Brastava Vele bakres Kom brastava lagwe Redos da brande Kaliagos The glory of your presence Let it fill this place Let the glory of your presence Fill this place Let the glory of your presence Fill this place Mantle your people with your presence, O oh God. Mantle your people. Let there be a holy convocation. My Father, my Father, Abba Father, my Father, I dare to call you my Father, my Maker, my Father. I hide behind the cross. Let the people see Jesus. Blessed be Hosanna Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Mighty Holy, I adore you, Lord. Let the people feel a piece of my passion for you. Sena Maria, na 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 mo shanta bala na 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 na. Sena Maria, na shanta na masia na 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 na. the Spirit of God I desire to draw men into my presence come approach my glory say the Spirit of God I lead you into my glory say the Spirit of God I lead you into my glory say the Spirit of God into the beauty of holiness where I crown you with splendor and joy That is where I replace your heaviness. Just worship him in one minute. Let's let the whole
The glory of God tests your seriousness. Because every time the glory of God shows up, your flesh begins to react. That part that will not bend to this glory. In his presence, he will be refined. I tell you the truth the secret of grace when you touch him the world will know that you touched him there's no guessing it there's no pretending it hallelujah is a God who sits in the heavens glory to your name verse 11 and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body James. Who is James? James. James. Who is that? Can I see your hands? Come quick. You are awesome in this place. There are healings going on. God is healing people right about now. You feel the heat of the spirit going through your body. It's the healing anointing. You are awesome. Encounters with the Holy Ghost. That's what he tells me. 
Lord, breathe upon him your power, your grace. Let him experience all of you. See, the fire of God is upon your hands, even for your music. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, sir. Where's your father? What's he doing? Your mother. Yes. You have been praying about it in the family. God says, I should tell you that your father is going to receive a job and that for everything that they have done against him, that God is going to replenish sevenfold. Are you listening to me? Take this word and take it back to me. My student here, what department are you? Computer science. Do you have any problem with your, do you have anything with your courses? Pray. Because I see that in this exam you are writing, there is a problem and that problem may delay you in this one. I listening to me. Pray that God will help you. And don't be rude to any lecturer. Are you listening to me? Does this make sense what I'm telling you? Don't be rude to any lecturer. You'll be frustrated for nothing. The Lord bless you. Acts chapter 19. And God wrought special miracles through the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Listen to me. It's God's desire that we become living tabernacles of his presence. Are you listening to me? That we become vessels of glory. The Bible says there is this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of power might be of God and not of us. It's God's desire that we come to a point where our bodies can host his glory. Where we can host his power. Where we can host his anointing. Are you listening to me? The Bible says that Paul was so full of God. He said handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul. Handkerchiefs and aprons taken from the body of Paul. And the Bible makes us to realize that these handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul and it was used. And devils cried out. Sick people got healed. There is a realm of glory and anointing and power hear me that god wants us to step into beyond nominal christianity listen to me we live in a wicked world are you listening to me the lord has been showing me visions of the kind of demonic and satanic things that hell is releasing against god's people oppression sickness and now we we have let me tell you something and i want to warn you listen i believe in the word of god but can i tell you something christianity without power will frustrate you are you listening to me that you become full of god's glory full of God. The Bible says in that day, it says the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and what? The yoke from off your neck and it says it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. In our bid to put balance between the word and anointing, people have given all kinds of excuses for not pressing into God and we have trivialized the anointing of the Holy Spirit to a point that many people just say look forget about it there's all these people manifestation all the time let's sit down and receive the word what is your definition of the word because in the days of the apostles they did not have what you call the bible so what was their word of god are you listening to me a powerless christianity will end you in frustration i get i get 
messages and I meet people almost daily. And I tell you the kind of oppression that Satan is bringing, the hostility that is coming from the pit of hell does not require just the kind of Christianity where you say, John 3, 16, all things are mine. Uh -uh. Are you listening to me? Handkerchiefs, the Bible says. An apron. Paul was so full of the Holy Ghost. The power, the anointing, the potency of the Spirit was in him. The Bible says to a point that people were waiting for him to step out. Peter was so full of the divine life of God that when he stepped out, his shadow, his shadow. Hallelujah. Jesus said something in Isaiah. In fact, Luke 18. Let's read the account in Luke chapter 4, sorry. From verse 17. The Bible says that he went into the temple as his custom was. And there was given to him the book that was written by prophet Isaiah. And then he opened it and there he declared, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, that Spirit, has anointed me. Smeared me, anointed me. And because of the anointing that I carry, he said, I will set the captives free. Declare liberty to the poor. It's amazing how we try to do God's work without his anointing. The anointing of God's spirit is his empowerment. It's the energizing that the spirit of God brings in us. Hallelujah. No king was ever allowed to function in ancient time until he was anointed. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, listen to me. One of the things that he does is not just to enlighten you and cause the word of God to come alive in your spirit. The Holy Ghost empowers you. Hallelujah. He causes his anointing to be alive and to be at work in your spirit. The Holy Spirit causes you to come into the place of his ability and his power. Causes you to begin to walk in the glory of God. The Bible says, and Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost. It took the Holy Ghost for Stephen to have just been stoned and he did not, he was not angry. It takes, listen, listen to me. It takes the Spirit for you to do some things you want to do. Are you listening to me? It takes the Holy Ghost to love. For the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. It takes the Holy Ghost to heal the sick, to set the captives free. If our Christianity is true, then we must be like Jesus. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, Peter speaking, he said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Jesus we are trying to become like, the Bible says he went about doing good on account of that anointing and the ability of the spirit and healing all they that were oppressed for God was with him hallelujah are you not tired of sympathizing with the many oppressed people around you are you listening to me how many oppressed people do you see around you every day and every time listen to me every time I see oppression I take responsibility for it because I know that God is not limited there is a level of glory and grace that we must step into and when we step into that level of glory and grace you will be able to host a greater weight of his presence are you listening to me a greater weight of his anointing a greater weight of his power and out of the overflow of that reality you will step in and begin to do the works of Jesus He said, if you say you are the children of Abraham, then do the works of Abraham. That means if you say you are the children of God, do the works of God. Handkerchiefs and aprons. In John chapter 7, Jesus speaking from verse 34. It was on the last day of the feast and Jesus said, if any man thirst, he said, let him come unto me. If any man thirst, let him come. He said, and that he will drink and that out of his belly shall flow what 
rivers rivers the revelation of that river is given in ezekiel chapter 47 when the bible begins to talk about the river that came from the east side of the temple and the bible says that he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my knees and then he measured a thousand cubits and then it was to um you know my my ankles he measured a thousand cubits it was to the loins he measured a thousand cubits he said and it was a river that i could not pass through he said wherever that river went the fish that was dead would come alive it's a life-giving river in fact the bible says there is a stream he said there is a river whose stream makes glad the city of god there is a river the river of healing the river of blessing the river of power the river of deliverance And God desires that we step into that realm where we can be useful for the king many of us listen to me we must step up many of us have been good counselors enough it's time for us to be miracle workers are you listening to me we have done enough of counseling enough of saying wow one day in the sweet by and by now it's time to be miracle workers doing the works of jesus christ there are many of you that if you will increase capacity you will end the captivity in your family you know what i'm talking about the thief cometh not john 10 10 but to steal to kill and to destroy satan has left his mark upon many lives and many families i was sharing i think it was during the minister's meeting i was saying that how that the lord showed me I saw an unusual release of the spirit of cancer cancer sent to different families breast cancer lung cancer cancer of the four ladies cancer of, I saw these things and it amazed me and let me tell you something if your Christianity is just enough to say wow Lord I thank you there will come a time when it will be as if the Bible lied about the victory of Jesus how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power in fact the Bible says that when I came to you Paul speaking he said I did not come with the excellency of speech the world has had enough of our noise he said but in the demonstration of power that your faith will not be grounded on the wisdom of man but on the power of God there are so many situations that happen to believers and we are so helpless about it and as helpless as we are god is also sad because that's not the limit there is more that he can do through us but we must build greater capacity for his glory when we sing the song what manner of man is jesus hallelujah he sings back and says what manner of man are you that you will not yield to me to see the fullness of me what manner paul walked in a realm see listen these guys walked in a realm that they call them gods he said the gods are come down to us they say paul was zeus and then his colleague hermes these were ancient gods men who lived like spirits upon the surface of the earth this has nothing to do with ministry it is the blueprint for safety for the times we are coming you must be full of god the anointing will be broken only to the degree i i, I think we, we were watching a program this evening and uh, we're watching something it was a deliverance that was happening to someone and then i was watching and when the person got delivered the demon entered another demon entered back into the person again hallelujah When you are full of the presence of God, I assure you, no demon. See, the Bible says, if you read NIV and other versions, they said the burden will be lifted because of the fatness of your neck. That the anointing will increase you to a point spiritually. Peter Tan, one great man of God, was caught up in the spirit some years ago. And he saw the state of his spirit man. The body was flourishing, eating every kind of thing. And when he saw his spirit, the spirit, his spirit man, 
was as thin as a broom, almost dying. And God told him, this is how you are spiritually. We have many men of God flourishing physically, but carrying no power. That's the reason why people criticize miracles and criticize the manifestation of the Spirit. And everything they say, say, look, just stay, stay with the word. I believe in the word of God. There are many people that come for miracle service and hold their Bibles in their hands. And at the end of it, you find them outside and demons are crying out of them. It is the ministry of the word of God in conjunction with the operation of his spirit that will bring men into liberty, that will bring men into truth. Are you not tired of the Christianity you see around? I'm asking you a question. Don't you ask questions that either God told us a lie in the Bible or there is something we are not getting. And let me tell you something. I blame the leaders, including myself. The reason is because the degree to which we press in the spirit is the degree to which we give others opportunity to come in. When we become complacent with where we are and a few falling down here and there, there is a higher realm beyond just falling up and down where a man becomes full of the life and the power and the glory of the spirit listen the bible says stephen just lifted his eyes and there the heavens was open to him can you imagine such a realm hallelujah a man met me for counseling and he shared a story that broke me this is what he said he said he went to a particular ministry having a challenge him and his wife and after they, after they prayed, you know, prayed, did everything for him, he was desperate. Listen, he was really desperate and his wife was dying. And when it looked like nothing was working, guess what he did? You will guess right. He went to a, you know, all kinds of things and, and did all kinds of conjunctions. And now, when, when people hear this, we do like this. Don't do that until you can prove a solution. Let me tell you something. We have no right to criticize any fake person until we can do the real thing. Are you listening to me? Is, um, do you know how many people, how many of your parents, how many of your brothers, how many of your loved ones that run to native doctors every day? They come to church on Sunday. You know what I'm saying. And you know I'm not telling a lie. Let me tell you, we live in a world that has a real need. Are you listening to me? A real need. A real need. And it takes the anointing of the Spirit. Jesus walked upon the earth. And the moment he stepped into the scene, he was a breath of fresh air because the, the scribes and the Pharisees could not help. Lord, I pray that we will not be scribes and Pharisees in our generation. That our Christianity will be an authentic Christianity that will be able to meet the needs of people and do the works of Jesus Christ. We must be dissatisfied with a few miracles here and there if there are 150 people who are sick and three people get healed we should be ashamed and go back and cry not rejoice and carry titles and say man of god apostle joshua selman am i challenging you because when you challenge yourself and you begin to press into the spirit then you open up yourself for more of his presence. When I began to study about God's generals, let me tell you something. I tell you sincerely, the generals that lived, I mean, before most of these people, they did not have the opportunity for their life to be recorded. Those guys walk like spirits on the earth. You need to study about them. And you'll be ashamed of the things we are doing. Number one, they had no worship team that steers the atmosphere. Right now, we live in a realm where you must steer the atmosphere as if the Holy Spirit has become a generator. So you say, okay, let's whine. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Now the power is moving. Those guys moved in a realm of grace, a realm of power. Their miracles were real miracles. Are you listening to me? I heard of a particular man who they came and someone's, I mean, there was a, 
there was a wound this big the whole family had done everything and he held it and closed it Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever what is your degree of hunger handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul do you know something I told myself one day if I have the opportunity to preach in a pastor's conference I will do something I will carry one person on wheelchair one blind person one amputee and I'll tell them follow me for the ministration I will line three of them here and say anybody that cannot heal these three sit quietly and let's press now we can laugh and feel nice but the native doctors are corrupting people they are corrupting our families all kinds of things are happening there are people who are dying satan's kingdom it is advancing i i, I was watching a, a program again this evening and someone was saying how that he was in the occult and he said he single-handedly won more than one million souls single-handedly i said god with our media we rejoice and say blue roof is full and we should be ashamed of ourselves are you listening to me hmm. bible says woe to them who are at ease in zion when there is a dissatisfaction in you you are ready to press further tonight i brought you to tell you that the realm that we are in the spirit there is a higher realm there are many of you who are sick here. you have been sick for long your families are sick is that true you have prayed for them nothing happened what are you doing about it anything pinching you from inside or are you just complacent for our fathers of old pressed into god jacob held him and said i will not let you go I will not let you go i will not let you go that a time will come your guitar steve strings will be more than what it is today that as you stand before the nations and strike one chord one chord it will reverberate the hearts of men we live in a generation with many christians and nobody can tell us a very concise plan of god concerning boko haram we have men we have men of god all kinds of men prophets apostles we should be ashamed of all these our titles when naman sent naman was sent with a letter to the king of israel and he went and he gave him the king was afraid elisha said why are you afraid call that man to come and let him know there is a prophet in israel i don't know how many of us can make that kind of statement Yes, we have celebrated HIV, tuberculosis, cancers. We have seen the grace of God, but it's nothing compared to what God wants. Can I tell you something? Listen. If this is my ministry inside this room, I tell you if I can solve your problem, the whole world will come and join the queue. Are you listening to me? even if they will reach just they will be patient do you know how little the solution of mankind is many people are not pressing into god it takes sacrifice friends to get to that realm it takes sacrifice that's why many people are not pressing that's why the few that press when they get there they are the only ones and pride kills them because the sacrifice is too great when they get there there is nobody in their class are you following me now One of the greatest men that I respect, Prophet Kobus, who has stepped into a level of the miraculous that I'm satisfied with. In one service, they brought out about 200 people on wheelchairs and crutches. Now that's, that's the work of the kingdom. The day everybody enters here and we prophesy to you and we say in the name of Jesus, receive a miracle in your family. And instantly you receive a phone call from your father. Even you will know that something different has happened. 
I assure you, next week, Koinonia, by four, you will be here. All your loved ones will live wherever they are. Do you know the rat race of man is to look for solution? I assure you, if they find the real solution, they will come. How many barren people move among us all the time? We pray and feel like men of God. Ah, tonight I'm here to challenge you. In your room. In your room. You can preach 100 sermons. If you raise one person from wheelchair here, you will do publicity without a poster. And men will come. Even if you to come and complain, they will just say, let's shout. Embedded in the heart of every man, is the need for every real solution and let me tell you the truth the fact that many people are skeptical about us means that there is we are not yet providing that degree of the god life because people will look jesus was an awesome wonder let me ask you a question please let me ask you a question please come aaron sweetheart please come you're a student here yeah? You're in demonstration. All right, listen to me. If Jesus were to appear to you right now, let's assume I'm Jesus. And he says, what do you want me to do for you? What will you say? You will run and carry your list. That means, the, that means you have problems. You are just laughing. The truth is you are not confident of the solution that is being, that's why you are quietly hiding it and say, let's manage what is there. If, if Jesus Christ, if we are truly his representatives, are you listening to me? How many of you can step in to a meeting and be sure that you'll be healed? Be sure that you'll be changed. That when they say, in the name of Jesus, you are blessed, you are sure that that word will come to pass. Are you listening to me? That this lady is here. If I am Jesus Christ, what, what, what class are you? JS3. You are going to write JSE. You are finished. Now, if I'm Jesus Christ and I come to you and I say, sweetheart, your JSE is A. Will you doubt me? Why? Because I'm Jesus Christ. Is that not true? Now we say as he is in heaven. Listen. 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 We say as he is in heaven, so are we in this life. But how come if I tell you be blessed, the truth is you are not seeing all of the blessings in your life. You are just afraid to tell me the truth. Are you listening to me? We gather people and claim to get them filled with the Holy Spirit, struggle over them, struggle over them, turn their head up and down, and then carry our frustration and go away. And the people are irritated. They know there is no power there. Hallelujah. It's amazing that in the midst of this lapse we have men of God who make such boasts they say the man of do you know I get very ashamed every time they say now let's introduce the man of God apostle and before they start people are shouting I'm saying okay apostle Josh apostle Paul apostle Peter apostle this do we match so when people are saying Kai look at the demonstration of the power look at this uh -uh. I'm telling myself I will not let anybody lie to me. I know the standard. The world is in a big need. We are celebrating ourselves like this because we have not been exposed. Go to the village and see the preparation that demons are doing. You will know we are joking. You know all this falling down doesn't impress them. It's just us that are hyping here. You go to the village and see a man divide a pot into two and pour water and you are seeing the other side and the water is boiling. Come on now. Even you, when you see that kind of thing, you will look at that man. I'm stirring up a real Christianity of power. And the truth is, when he finishes, when your father cannot afford your school fees, after going to the man of God and praying and sowing seed, prophet's offering, apostle's offering, every kind of offering, it doesn't work. I assure you, your father is going to the village. Except the problem is not too much. How many sick people leave Chica? Straight, they pass our churches and go to the villages. Some of your parents, have they not done it? We all came to Chica and prayed for them. Gathered around like men of God and made our boast and our noise. And nothing happened. And while they just look, they say, thank you, man of God. In their heart, they already know there's no hope. And somebody calls them. 
and says, sorry, um, we, we, there, is, there is one Baba. And now you can sit down and easily say, how can a man go to a Baba? You are not yet desperate for solution. A woman who has been around 10 years, 12 years, no children. Any suggestion will make sense at that point. Are you listening to me? You are here struggling and we cannot even prophesy and say you will graduate in spite of your courses. I tell you, go to a native doctor in Zaria and see if you will not do something that will change your result and you will graduate. Are you listening to me? A lady who is shouting and saying no marriage, no marriage and we are here saying okay, let's manage the situation. What is the psychological implication? When you were 12, what happened? Look at that nonsense. And you get to a native doctor as soon as you are entering he tells you born on the um, 16th of august your name is grace come and sit down there's a seat i've prepared for you here and this pot is boiling i know you like steven so what else tell me and say, baba is true and you see some of our parents as dignified as they are see how they become children in the presence of devils because they are desperate for solution they can come and sit here in church and we'll give them nice seats but the native doctor say, enter with your back and they're entering because they are desperate so, yeah, yeah, stand and the man stands he said now sit down he said if you turn back and you see your father and your mother your dignified people there is a man of god standing and we fold our arms and say you know uh the lord appeared to me don't lie to us don't tell us lies again because we need to be seeing the fruit of that appearance stop telling us lies that you saw Jesus and you saw angels because those who saw Jesus and saw angels in the Bible we know what happened to them let me tell you the presence of one angel killed 150,000 people those who chorus I'm seeing angels every minute every second come on am I challenging you tonight I'm shaking off things that the Bible says that David played his heart and something happened to Saul. A spirit left Saul. How many demons and principalities and powers lead the praises and worship in our church? Unaffected by the power of worship. Thank God for the excellence. Thank God for the backdrops. Thank God for everything. Am I challenging you? What is your concept of Christianity? It says, out of him will flow rivers. Rivers. What you see today that you call a blessing and the power of God, do you know it's just one step out of the cave compared to where God wants to take us to? We insult people and said they have gone to do all kinds of diabolical things. So why don't you help them? Satan does not create anything. He only perverts. Can we have a voice that will give us authentic biblical Christianity? Do we have men like that? That you can come to me with no job and you are already smiling when you see me because you are sure that you are going back with a job receive 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 and we're sweating and the protocol runs with a handkerchief so you are joking nonsense i'm not ashamed to say it we should be ashamed of ourselves i'm getting frustrated with all of these things we do and we sugarcoat our christianity you know what god is angry let me tell you god is not happy about it Oh God, give me members. Let Koinonia come and fool and we stand and we look at the many people. But there are people with needs. Real needs. And it's amazing. There are many ministers who are complacent. You just sit down on Sunday. Share one book. I don't care whether you are quoting scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. If it's not helping people to become like Christ and really meeting their needs and breaking, if your gospel is true, Satan should react to it. I don't mean reaction. Satan should oppress you. The people should be free. 
It says, and ye shall know the truth. How come we teach? We have sessions and sessions of weeks of teaching. And I tell you, demons attend all the sessions. And only certain lower demons just manifest. And we stand as men of God, we are nodding. But you know the real people who have demons. You can't go and meet them because you know the demons won't go out. You know the real people. There are people troubling our fathers and our mothers. We know that if we had, if I gave you power right now, that everyone, every demon you shouted on will go. Some of you will enter bus this night and say, Uncle Sam is leaving my house once and for all. Why are you unable to go? Hallelujah. A minister finishes ministering. And when he finishes, he says, pray for me. I'm expecting a comeback from Satan. What the heck are we saying? Jesus casted out a legions of demons and slept sound. The only reason why they caught him was because he gave himself. They took him to a cliff and he just walked through there. And he said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. That you can stand and look at your sisters and say the error of barrenness, the error of waiting, dying at 24, dying at 25 is over. This is not the issue of man of God. You are coming with an anointing full of the Holy Ghost. This is what I cried and I told God. I said, Lord, if you are not going to take me to this level of Christianity, let me stop ministry. I'm fooling myself. Thank God for all the things that have happened. Thank God for the supernatural supplies and the grace of God. But there is more. There is more. We admire men who have stepped into that dimension or a bit of it. And then we pray all the time and say, the Lord is going to send a revival. How will it come? Is it not going to come through us? Listen, there is a price. But I want you to know that God wants us to pay that price. To enter into that level. Are you listening to me? Because Satan is not sleeping about your case. Satan is nervous about your manifestation. And he's not going to rest. And if all we will get up and do is just ba 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 ba. Thank you Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! And demons are watching and say, I wonder how demons look at us. They say, what in the world is going on here? Power! And we shout. Jesus looked at a raging storm. He lifted his hands and said, Shalom, be still. Kabataba. Talk about authority. What manner of man? We struggle for hours with demons. He looked at the money. The demons were begging him. I've never seen a service where we come to and all the demons come to the front and say, please, ministers, before time for sermon, we know we are going out. Can you send us to Shika instead of Giwa? That's what they did for Jesus. The demons made advances and said, let's negotiate. We are sure we are going to leave. Nothing will make us stay, but please, just send us to the peaks. And Jesus said, go, go, go. Right now, what we glory in, what we glory in is to call a lady out. And then once she's shaking, you just want to prove. Look, let me tell you, we are doing things to cover for our laziness and lack of hunger. You just find one yielded lady who is moving. And like, now, I'll just touch you with one finger. What the heck is that? There are real sick people. If you are really a miracle worker, do it. Thank God for the growing of small, small legs. But what of the one who doesn't have anything? Can they come for miracle services too? Are they invited? Are they invited? Or are there some... Do you know... Listen, listen. Do you know what it means? When blind people, lame people, crippled people sit down and come to our services and we're shouting, what manner of man is Jesus? Then when we get to the place, we made... And immediately they say, he made the blind to walk. You see, entourage. And the man of God is stepping in. Now the man of faith and power. He comes to sit down, waste people's time, makes all kinds of noise, throws a few people on the ground, one migraine here, one cancer, one wheelchair, and the ass is going out. We all boast and clap. Shame on us. Should 
get up and come. There is a higher realm. Three men shook cities. How many men of God do we have in Zaria and in Nigeria? And yet evil is just thriving as if there are no men of God. When Paul entered a city, demons responded from the headquarters and ran. And the three, two men, Paul alone, covered Asia Minor. No flight, no nothing. Full of the Holy Ghost. Charles G. Finney. These were men that stepped a bit into that realm. Listen to what Charles G. Finney would do. This is what he would do. Shaba Kapranda Kaparadabos. Round the city. He's walking around. Le Kapo Zata Pranta Katabaladabash. While he finishes praying, guess what he would do? He would just walk out of the city. Suddenly, men will start falling down from everywhere. People are just preparing in their factory. The power of God hits the people. If we have that kind of thing happen in our generation, the man who build it, Joshua Selman, and will say, now come and sow, 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 sow. Everything so. Let me tell you something. The day God will judge the people who are sowing all the time, we, are, we, we just let them package your seed and sow into this anointing. What anointing? It's because the people are so desperate. So the little that is there, they pour themselves to it. But there is a God that sits in heaven. And he desires for us to step in to a higher realm. We're going to pray. And God will visit you tonight. But I don't know what is your definition of Christianity. There is a dying world out there. Enough of charity. We need miracle workers. Are you listening to me? We need miracle workers. A viper beats the hand of Paul. And Paul just looked at it and shook it. Shook it. Shook it. Lord, take us to these realms. Where did you take Alexander Dewey to? Lord, where did you take William Branham to? Take us to that realm. Take us to that realm. Take us to that realm. Where you will move in a level of glory and grace. A level of power and victory otherwise there is serious mourning that will come to the body because satan will eat up everything he can eat up do you know something the more you are being challenged and the more we men of god keep lying to you and not causing you to press and we ourselves will not press let me tell you the danger the danger is that satan will have a free ride and a day will come frustration will come upon the body of christ want to be one of the celebrity men of God who is wasting people's time and wasting God's time. I want to be a serious person. I told God that anywhere they invite me for a meeting, I'm going there for serious business. I assure you, if we step into this realm of power, you will know that you are a blessing to the world now. Your English notwithstanding, all these rubbish things we put as excuses in ministry, Say your lingua franca. Right now we live in a digital age. Let me tell you. If koinonia has just maths, if you are getting the kind of result that will scare you, you how did we used to meet before? Remember? We're meeting where? On the floor. And we have many men of God. You put balloon. You put this. The, the, P, the PAA has his own cap. This guy has his own cap. Whether we wear bandana, whether we wear cap, whether we wear green, white, green, whether we wear football jerseys, nothing will replace the absence of fire. Nothing. See, the reason why ministries compete, they are only covering for lack of fire, I assure you. No man who has real fire has time for competition. Hallelujah. I want to be that kind of person. I know people who accept God helps them. Their situation is hopeless. I went to Shika one time. I prayed for a lady. I tell you, I, I felt how powerless my prayer was. I hope I'm helping you tonight. I'm the apostle Josh who called. But I'm telling you this. There is a higher realm. 
and we can either pretend it and continue doing ministry or repent from ministry and step into a life of glory that's what I want you to encounter I've repented for ministry since I've repented from it there is a higher realm there are many of you that cry in your hostels and you come and just sit down and say Lord would you touch me and we are here laughing tell your neighbor uh -huh, uh -huh. how does that bring healing please sit down sweetie. Satan will keep being attractive until the day the sons of life come out if I spit on you and your family receives a breakthrough I assure you, you carry container and come and say, Josh, where is that anointed saliva? As, as, as smelly as it is, you will say, no matter how fine you are, this is how desperate people are for a miracle. Let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven let it rain father let it rain would you open the floodgates of heaven let it rain the rain of new levels let it rain listen to me do not think this teaching tonight is for men of God I assure you you will deceive yourself the teaching tonight is not for men of God the teaching tonight is for a generation that is desperate enough that we are saying we are tired of this worshipers are you ready to enter the next level of grace full of the Holy Ghost out of your belly out of your words out of this mic let it flow rivers rivers of healing rivers of blessings rivers of power rivers of grace let the sick be truly healed let the oppressed be truly delivered set a new standard rise beyond nominal christianity rise beyond average yes you're a man of god but there is more yes you're a woman of god but there is more rise up on your feet everybody let's travel for a few minutes let it rain. Open the There is more. I am tired of this level. Tired of this level. There is more. I can be a better blessing. I can be a better blessing. Reka tempo koso fregere gerebo. She fregere gerebo. A generation of power, a generation of miracles, signs, wonders, living careers of the glory, you 
that to the spirit. Heal that to the spirit. Heal that to the spirit. That will confront the gates of hell. Confront the gates of hell. The church. He said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell. Is that need to bow there are levels we need to step into hallelujah I'm going to pray for you I pray the prayer and I pray that tonight there will be a baptism of fire more of the Holy Ghost you need him this is not just the issue of falling down there is urgency we need more of his power. More of the Holy Ghost. And I tell you, listen. The power of God will sweep across this place. I'm angry in my spirit. You must be ignited. You must be ignited. You must be ignited. I prayed and I told my father. Invade the people with your glory. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to scatter yourselves around as much as you can. We are going to pray and there will be an impartation. No, you will not go back the same. You will not go back the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 What will happen tonight is a baptism of fire. The Bible says the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. And fire. He said his word was like fire in my bones. Fire for miracles. Real miracles. Real deliverances. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray. Holy Ghost, begin to move across the congregation right now. In the name of Jesus, right now, I invoke power. I invoke power. I invoke an anointing. I invoke power. 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 Move across the town. Move across the town. Move across the town. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.